Hello and Namaste. Welcome to Temples Books and Science. On this channel, I have spoken about the magnificent Gangadhara sculpture of the Kailashanathar Temple in Kanchipuram and the astronomical information encoded in it. Today, I want to talk to you about the Bhikshatana form of Shiva, another magnificent sculpture in this temple. In order to understand this sculpture, we should first learn the story of Bhikshatana. It is a story steeped in metaphors. Different versions of this story appear in several Puranas. The sculpture in Kailashanathar temple seems to be depicting the version from Kurma Purana. In a forest called Darukavanam, there lived some sages along with their wives. These sages were very learned in Vedas. Through their knowledge of mantras and through the performance of yajnas, they had acquired a lot of siddhis or powers. They had become drunk with these powers and stopped believing in God. They stopped believing in a higher power. According to our Shastras, there are four pursuits open to man. Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Dharma, Artha, Kama are the pursuit of Punyam through good deeds, pursuit of wealth and pursuit of pleasure. These sages were so consumed in the pursuit of Dharma, Artha, Kama, they lost sight of the highest pursuit, the pursuit of Moksha or liberation. Lord Shiva wanted to teach them a lesson that all these material acquisitions can never give permanent happiness or security. He appeared before the sages as the handsome Bhikshatana, a naked mendicant with a begging bowl in his hand. Vishnu in the form of the seductress Mohini accompanied him. The wives of the sages were enamoured by the handsome man who radiated brilliance and power. Like the gopis who forgot themselves in the presence of Lord Krishna, these wives too forgot themselves in Bhikshatana's presence. They danced and sang with joy and followed him everywhere. They were so intoxicated with desire that they did not even notice their clothes slipping from their bodies. This infuriates the sages. They use all their powers to destroy Bhikshatana. First, they conjure up a tiger and send it towards him. He effortlessly kills the tiger and makes a garment for himself with its skin. Then they hit him with a ball of fire. He just grabs it and makes it his plaything. They send a snake after him and he wears it as an ornament. Then they send a demon to destroy him. Bhikshatana subdues him effortlessly and dances on top of him. Shiva is normally seen with a snake around his neck, dancing on a demon, wearing tiger skin and holding a fire in his hand. This story tells us how he acquired these accessories. Finally, the sages realize they are dealing with a divine power. They pray to Shiva who reveals his true form. The sages understand the limitations of their siddhis and surrender to Shiva. Bhikshatana is a common image in many Shiva temples. There are two magnificent Bhikshatanas in Kailashanatha temple. They are very similar. One is as large as the Gangadhara I spoke about on this channel and the other one is a smaller image. In the large Gangadhara, you will find Mohini to the left of Gangadhara. This is in line with the story in Kurma Purana. That is how we can infer that this image is inspired from Kurma Purana. The Bhikshatana form of Shiva always wears a pair of slippers. That is one of the ways you distinguish this form from Bhairava, which is a more fierce form of Shiva. In both the sculptures of Bhikshatana, you can see the slippers. Look at how majestic he looks. The sculptor has captured the beauty and sensuality of the Lord who so enamoured the wives of the sages that they lost their mind at the mere sight of him. Look at the perfect curls of his dreadlocks. Notice the rings at the end of each lock of hair and the natural fall of his thick hair. He has the full cheeks of a young man and large doe eyes. His full lips are slightly parted. Look at his broad shoulders, his muscular legs and the elegant turn of his body which draws attention to his well-rounded glutes. 
His whole being exudes sensuality. There is nothing prudish about this image. It is unabashedly sexual. This sexuality is further accentuated by the woman kneeling next to him. Her clothes have slipped away from her. There are two other women on his right who are looking at him with admiration. This is a smaller image but equally beautiful. This is a more well-preserved image than the larger one. This Bhikshatana too has all the elements of the larger one. His hair is more stylish and longer. His posture is identical to that one. You can see two women kneeling in front of him. Look at the expression on her face. She appears almost in a trance. Behind the two women, you can see the furious husband with his hand raised. He bears an expression of anger and frustration. According to the Puranic story, the Bhikshatana form is so overtly sexual that he is supposed to have had an erect phallus. This overt sexuality is presented without inhibitions in these sculptures. It is the image of a god who is so sensual that he drove a bunch of women crazy with lust. If you contrast this image with later images of Chola and Vijayanagara, you will see that Shiva is stripped of this sensuality. Here is a Chola era Bhikshatana. Here too you find a handsome figure. The wives of the Rishis are looking at him with awe. Although he is a handsome man, he looks more like an ascetic. Just by looking at him, you cannot tell why these women lost their minds. It should be noted that the representation of the women hasn't changed. They are still looking drunk with desire and their clothes are slipping off their body. Here is a more recent Vijayanagara era Bhikshatana from Tiruvannamalai. While you cannot take away from the fact that these are beautiful sculptures carved by master craftsmen, it does not capture the spirit of the Puranic story like the one in Kailashanathar temple. Look at this one from Gangai Konda Cholapuram. He seems so elaborately dressed, he looks like a prince wandering in the forest. All the women are missing from this image. He is exquisite, but this is not how a naked wandering mendicant is supposed to look. As you see temples of different era, you will notice the changing attitude towards certain taboo subjects. Sexuality was never a taboo in our culture. That is why you will find many explicit images in our temples. As we approach the modern times, you will find that gods are stripped of all these aspects. The message seems to be that a sexual being cannot be revered, respected or worshipped. Images of bare-chested Durga wielding her weapon is now discreetly covered in clothes. This is Lajja Gauri, an image you find in many ancient temples. A lady seated with her genitals exposed without any inhibitions. We worship the Shivalingam, which most scholars agree is a phallic symbol, representing the moment of creation as the union of God and Goddess, the union of Shiva and Shakti. We worship Kali wearing a garland of severed hands, holding a severed head with one foot planted on her husband. We belong to an ancient culture that believes that everything that exists is God. Here in Kailashanatha temple itself, you will find a Lakshmi, a pot-bellied elder sister of Lakshmi who represents all the things opposite to what Lakshmi represents. A Lakshmi is a personification of the things that we hate and fear like poverty, sorrow and disease. She was worshipped in those days. The ability to recognize divinity in everything is the ultimate spiritual goal. We tend to think that these are liberal views brought in by the Western world. But our ancient temples tell a different story. They speak of a liberal, broad-minded and inclusive culture way ahead of its times. They speak of timeless values that are only now being recognized and celebrated by the rest of the world. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share this with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.